Welcome back to the Freaking Awesome Podcast. This is episode 39. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's, let's kill that bass head. Alright, let's do this. I'm on the air, we on the air, we got this pockets flow. It's me and Tony on the mics, we gotta let you know. Of current events, little gaming, sprinkle in some entertainment. We stay humble, but our mom still thinks we're famous. Turn up the bass and baby, maybe let that magic flow. I spoken word is all the things you really wanna know. Having a good time on the show, T Bows and Maddie G. Tune in and hit subscribe and join us on the FAP. Welcome everybody to the Freaking Awesome Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Bose, and sitting across from me is nobody. Uh, Maddie couldn't make it today, but we have a very, very special guest uh, who's going to be filling in and kind of being uh, my co-host today, as well as a guest. Uh, he is an actor, a writer, a producer. He's very famously known for his television series, Arliss, uh, being on Bull Durham, and uh, the original um, Batman which, of course, is where I recognize him the most. Ladies and gentlemen, actor Robert Wall. Robert, thanks Hello, for joining us today. Fine. Thank you very much. Good. Um, we really appreciate you being on the show and taking a little bit of time out of your day. Uh, we're going to jump... Where's the, big, where's, the show, where's the show originate from? Uh, we are in Kingston, Ontario, in Canada. In Canada. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's... That's, uh... good to, that's good to know. I was in, I was in Canada last... September for the Toronto International Film Festival, which I've been to the last couple of years, and I love. I like Canada a lot. I shot a movie, a couple of movies there, and uh, I like Canada. I, I actually do. I, I enjoy being there a lot. It's... I always remember Toronto. It, it was described by the great late Peter Ustinov, one of okay. the great actors and raconteurs, mm -hmm. who once described Can Toronto as New York run by the Swiss. <laughs> that sounds about right. Uh, yeah. Probably just as much pollution up in Toronto. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, when when you think about it, uh, based on uh, square mileage, I think it's about the same. So there there are days where it is just as brown as as what you would uh, expect to see in New York. In so, but um, actually, when when you were you said you were up to the Canadian Film Festival, so you were kind of up here in our in our beautiful time when uh, the sun is still shining and uh, yeah. the the uh, Foliage is just beautiful on the trees, and it looks quite nice out here. Yeah, I've had a great time. I have, I've been looking forward to going to it this year. I don't know. Uh, September, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Hopefully everything will be back to normal by then. Normal? I don't think things are coming back to normal for a very long time. <laughs> it's true. Will things ever be back to the now, way it was? Now, yeah. to, your point, to your point, there might be a new normal. Yes. But... Um, but I, I understand your point, basically. So, uh, <laughs> yes, okay. Whatever normal is, whatever definition of normal is, hopefully it is that. <laughs> it varies from place to place. You know, one of the things I really love about this whole uh, COVID lockdown kind of thing is uh, the, the way the world is bouncing back in many ways. And uh, the way uh, I was looking at an article of, uh, from India where uh, the pollution has, like, gone down to almost 10%. Uh, you know, compared to what it's normally like, and uh, there's animals making a bounce back. There was there was an article in Africa where because people weren't out and about, there were lions scattered all over the road, just sunning themselves. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, that's so, good. Yeah, that's good. so it's it's quite quite amazing, yeah, you know. They're not good. living in fear. That, that's very true. That pollution has gone down. I think everywhere. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it has. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so just, that is a good thing. Just, just imagine the impact if we did this for a full year. I mean, there might be a little bit of craziness, but at the same time, the world might actually be a little cleaner place. Yeah, I don't see that happening. Because <laughs> you know, the moment people are going to come out, they're going to hit all the fast food restaurants. They're going to start throwing their garbage everywhere, and it's going to bounce back like crazy. I think everything, uh, it'll be interesting to see. I'm not going to say, I, 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 I expect there'll be a rush to, an initial rush to go back to everything, but let's see what the residual effect of this is. Um, <laughs> I'll be interested to see what it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually interested on how many, the, how the, the divorce rate might skyrocket after this. It's going to go up. Domestic abuses have gone up. Yeah. Um, for sure. Um, on the same time, I think crime has gone down. I think right now. It almost balances sure out. How that all, if, if this goes longer, 
Now, there, if people don't get their jobs back, crime's going to go back up. Yeah. Um, it'll be uh, you know, divorces are going to go up, births are going to go up, um, domestic violence will go up. Yeah. There's, I would imagine I would imagine alcoholism would go up. I think that's actually already gone up. I, I think there was a, a report recently, yeah. and that, that's how a lot of people are being able to tolerate their families is by just staying drunk. <laughs> Luckily, I haven't gone to yeah, day drinking I, yet. <laughs> now I know in the states, gun sales have gone up ninety percent. It, so it's really funny because I don't know. I just saw how the Canadian government is now going to start. Uh, looking at potentially banning um, larger rifles and assault rifles, everything in Canada that that hasn't been a problem yet, uh, or if it has, it's been very minimal. I shouldn't say it hasn't; it has been, but it's very minimal. And um, so it's very interesting where certain crimes go up and certain sales go up, and then now Canada is just like, you know what? Maybe we're going to hold off on on automatic weapons and, and rifles. So well, that's uh, that's that's something. I'll be interested to see how that comes out too. We'll see how that plays out. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I think there's going to be a lot of pissed off people. So uh, speaking of some... people, you're always pissed off. People. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You can't please people. Uh, at least, uh, even probably one or two percent of the time. The... No, there's always going to be pissed off people. Yeah. Well, as they say, haters going to hate. Um, we got a first article today, and uh, to try to bring a, a little light humor into people's lives, uh, you know, the COVID-19, of course, hasn't, uh, you know, it, it's got its trips and follies, uh, but the heart of the headline on this article is, uh, the testicle festival is now on hold. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, I'm not, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of one of these things. And, and it makes me think of, uh, the, the, what was it? The Chevy Chase movie with Dan Aykroyd, where they did the, the great outdoors. Never saw it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, about, uh, two brothers that get together and they're very different opposite ends of the spectrum to have a family vacation. Um, but this article, uh, unlike a lot of, uh, the other COVID-19, uh, punch-ups about, uh, toilet paper aisles being empty and, and all the, the crazy hoarding and stuff. Uh, there is an editorial team at the local newspaper in Lanaway County in Michigan in the U.S., and uh, they had found an article that basically was talking about how one of the, the local fairs uh, put on by the legions had to postpone their testicle festival. And what this festival is all about is everything testicle. And it, it, as crazy as it might seem, the the legion would basically do this this festival where they cook up a bunch of testicles and and people apparently find these as a delicacy um i i myself i can't really say that i've ever tried it nor probably even want to uh, but they did actually go through and uh, their their big things are are basically like i said the cattle fried uh, testicles chicken gizzards and uh, and of course beer because I think that there's no way that you could actually want to eat these things unless you're consuming a lot of beer. Funniest part out of all of this is that they're they're stating that it, it's really sad that it's been pushed back or that they're had to you know postpone it indefinitely. But they're saying thankfully that it, it's not they're not going to actually lose any food on this. That that the testicles can stay frozen for two months. Now. I don't know about you, but when when, that, when these things are, are are purchased, I'm sure there was already a shelf date. But I mean, we're 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 going to to be kind of pushing that limit because I mean, their fair was made for May, and uh, you know that this is now looking like things may go into to June with a lot of the lockdown. So, I wonder what people end up doing with 300 pounds of testicles. What's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Um, I think the strangest thing I ever ate was cow heart. Cow heart. My wife, you know, when, when we go to Europe, my wife eats a lot more, they eat a lot more organ stuff out there. When you're in Europe, they eat a lot more organ meat. A yeah. lot. She ate heart. I remember she had a heart. I think she had some brains and some heart. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, not had any kind of mountain oysters or anything like that. I got a question for you. What would be your death row meal? Oh, boy. Um, I would think it would probably be... As, as much as it's kind of crazy and I'm either a Mexican food or a pizza fan, I think it would be a good old-fashioned uh, roast beef dinner with mashed potatoes, Yorkshire pudding, gravy, corn, like the whole kind of fixings. It's a good old, good old Irish now, meat and potato a, meal. 
So are you, do you have a UK background that you would have Yorkshire pudding? Uh, yeah, I, you know, well, I kind of a, a an Irish family, and uh, we're actually kind of like uh-huh. an Irish, famous Scottish German family. So, um, Yorkshire puddings oh, are, are, are to me, it's like a bread vessel, a, a bread vessel to carry more gravy. Yeah. Okay. So you would you wouldn't be haggis. No. <laughs> no, I. Have, I you, have you ever had haggis? Have I, you ever had haggis? No, I haven't. I, I, the The idea of uh, blood and guts served in a stomach it just it, it it actually turns my stomach. Which would you eat first, haggis or testicles? Haggis. Yep, without a doubt. I for some idea I, or reason I I don't like the idea of putting balls in my mouth. <laughs> You know, it's too bad Matt wasn't here because. Uh... Oh come on! It's not like you haven't done it. It's not like you haven't done it before. <laughs> yeah. This this is exactly what come I expect on. Matty G for. Your producer was telling me something entirely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, despite the the popular belief, uh, I I definitely try to stay clear of testicles as much as I can. You know what I I even find as a guy, uh, even having testicles are quite annoying and uh, constantly in the way. So. Uh, you know, my wife often okay, asks so me, uh, I don't even know how you deal with those things constantly. Oh, sure, there. sure. Suddenly you brought up the wife for cover. <laughs> Suddenly I It's all a ruse. The wife. <laughs> just, just so your audience knows, hey, hey, uh, you know, I wouldn't do this. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I think she, she got brought up on episode one. So we're, we're pretty much clear on that right from the get-go. And then we go the other way. Yeah. Which would your wife, what would she eat first? Would she eat haggis or testicles? Um, and don't tell me that. Uh, no, she's yeah, going for she's uh, going for the balls. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure, she'll appreciate, I'm sure she'll appreciate you saying that on the radio, <laughs> yeah. on the podcast. Yep. <laughs> I think I think you better move on to the next item of news. All right. What else have we got here? <laughs> Uh, you know what? This this goes a little bit better. Uh, the headline on this one is uh, "Breast Implant Saves Woman Shot in the Chest." See, now we're we're moving this yes, over to so. a boob thing. <laughs> so in in Washington, uh, or sorry, I should say, a Washington woman was actually up in uh, the Toronto area, and uh, her life was saved by her silicon breast plants after she was shot in the chest at close range while walking down uh, the street in Toronto. Uh, the 30-year-old left, uh, left breast implant deflected the bullet away from her vital organs and into the second breast. Uh, according to the case study, uh, the patient, who wasn't named, uh, was uh, left the, the local emergency department after, uh, sorry, went to the local emergency department after feeling pain in her chest and seeing blood. Uh, the surgeons found a single entry rune and retrieved a bullet below her right breast, which the forensics later determined was a copper jacket 40 caliber. Now, I, I got to tell you, boobs are, are an amazing thing, but I don't think I would have ever seen them as being a life-saving thing. So the first two questions you asked me are about balls and boobs. It, 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 are these the news items you search out when you – I mean, are we going to do – is a rectal thing next? Uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to get a, a bead on where this is going this time. <laughs> you know what? Uh, because of COVID nineteen, news can be relatively low. But uh, this uh, this was just naturally what comes up in articles, you know. So we have to do a little digging and uh, find out what's out there. And believe it or not, uh, they were our our t- uh, topics today. And um, I, I I think uh, given the uh, the multitude uh, of uh, different roles you've played, I mean, surely you've come across these topics more than once. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't think I have actually, to be honest with you. I'm trying to think. Maybe I have. I, I'm trying. <laughs> nothing's jumping out at me. There's no balls or boobs jumping out at me right now. <laughs> So, um, as I had mentioned uh, in our in our little intro, I mean, my uh, first uh, introduction into the world of Robert Wall was uh, I remember you being uh, on the original Burton's Batman. Okay, yeah, Loved it. Uh, yeah. It, it was so to me. I've I've seen every Batman movie that's out there, and to me, Michael Keaton's Batman will always be the Batman. Um, well, I think it's a lot, a lot of it's generational too. How old are you? Uh, I am forty three. Okay, forty two. Well, you fall right. Well, you probably well. You were very young when the first one came out. You're only about thirteen. Yep. So that would have been very impressionable. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I think you have to separate the generational aspect of the the Batman series, the Tim Burton slash, and that holds four or five episodes. 
to the Dark Knight episodes. I think they're two different uh, series for two different generations.